I'm gonna close this after. So we are on almost. All right, we are live. Hello, my loves. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're here, please say hello. And if you're here on the replay, please type in replay. I'm so excited about today's potent episode and Facebook Live special. I am, if you haven't seen me before, I'm Rosalind Fung. I'm an Akashic visibility business coach specializing in visibility, client attraction, and soulful selling. And I am here with my new friend, Demo Casanova. Now, so wonderful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to jam so deeply about yeah. what it takes to achieve your biggest, what you might feel like unrealistic dreams. Mm. Let me tell you, you might not recognize Demo's face, but you may recognize his work. He is a music producer to uh, amazing, incredible artists such as Madonna, Jay-Z, Rihanna, Timberland, Justin Timber Timberlake, and Jamie Foxx. Demo speaks about what traits are necessary to cultivate high performance habits and mindsets. Now, Demo didn't start in stardom. Okay, so he mm -hmm. actually, he's gonna share his story a little bit more about how he was a gang member when he was young. And by the age of 26, he became one of the top music producing recording artists and engineers in, um, in, in the world. And so, I'm so, so excited to pick Demo's brain. Um, we are gonna get into exactly how do you, you know, break it down to what are the traits, the mindset, mm. the beliefs, what does it take to get you from where you are right now? It doesn't matter where you are, because there's always another level. You guys know I, I say that a lot. Okay, so what's that next level? I mean, I'm gonna be learning so much and taking in so much wisdom. Mm -hmm. We've also opened up the Akashic Records, the records of our souls, so that we're being clear vessels to channel through whatever needs to be channeled through so that those of you who are watching live and on the replay, you're receiving the medicine here to be ignited, to be activated, to be catalyzed into your next level bold and unapologetic. So if you deeply desire to leave this world with your legacy and really impacts people on a soul level, this is really absolutely for you. If you are wondering, where do I even begin? You know, we talk, we're gonna talk about the traits. And if we have time today, <laughs> I feel like we're going to jam so much. We're going to no. dive into plant medicine. Um, Demo and I were personally talking a little bit about that. And I'm a little bit of a newbie to that world, being a shamanic practitioner of two years now. And I'll be on my, as we're recording this, I'll be going to Peru uh, and hiking the Inca Trail and, nice. and em embracing some plant medicine there too. So yeah, I'm very excited. So let me share a little bit with you, Double, before we jam about how incredible this man is. I've had the um, fortune to meet you, Demo, um, mm -hmm. at Blue Talks, which is for those of you who have been following me for a while, you're part of my community deeply, you know what that is. Blue Talks is like TEDx meets chicken soup for the soul. Uh, it's founded by my good friend, one of my business besties, Corey Poirier. And it stands for business, life, and universe. And so Corey is incredible in terms of connecting us with incredible people like Demo. And Demo came in for um, the mastermind portion. And I was just so touched by who Demo is. I was touched by his story. I was touched by his persistence and just how, honestly, Demo, you're just so relatable and so authentic. and to know that the the fame you have and the success you have and still you are just so human. <laughs> you have like no <laughs> ego. I love it. I'm like, oh, I want to connect. He's like my person. So let me share a little bit more formally about uh, Demo before we dive in. Just so you guys know the caliber, if you can't feel that already. So uh, Demo from life as a teenage gang member 
growing up in the streets of Miami to becoming by age 26, one of the most sought after recording mixing engineers in the music industry. He was living through teenage years surrounded by drugs, violence, and tragic deaths. Demo shares candidly about overcoming adversity, the power of persistence, and the importance of having clearly defined outcomes. And as a recording mixing engineer and producer, Demo has been credited on over 50 million records sold, has consulted on music award shows, including Grammys and Billboard Music Awards. He has received numerous Grammy nominations, has won a Latin Grammy Award, and helps produce Madonna's Emmy-nominated halftime Super Bowl, Super Bowl show. <laughs> incredible in addition to working as a keynote speaker and strategic performance consultant he is also the co-founder and chairman of feel good now which i love that name it's an organization oh. committed to raising human consciousness i love that even more and demo also contributes as a mentor and a regular lecturer of full sale university and other educational institutions so welcome demo i'm so happy Thank and i you. feel so honored that you are here spending your time with us and i'd love to start with your journey of what what got you into you know becoming a gang member and then what got you out in in those years um well for me when i was younger i was always a um I always kind of ran, I kind of beat to my own drum. And um, yeah, when I was younger, that was just kind of what, what what you did, you know? You got a bunch of friends together and then, you know, you kind of did things that you probably shouldn't be doing. And uh, I was always in trouble. That was like <laughs> my thing. It's funny, I, I was with my mother the other day and I, and laughingly we were walking and I, I said, you know, mom, I was just totally the kid that didn't give you any trouble, right? <laughs> she just looked at me with this crazy look, like, man, all you gave me was trouble. Um, I was just always in trouble. Like oh. I didn't, I didn't know. And this is, I believe that we all have traits of success built into us. Yes. And the more we become aware through our, the way we live our life, even when it's not on the right side of the track, we become aware of these these gifts that we have, and mine was that I I always felt that I was I was there was some about me that was unique. Mm -hmm. I came to find out later in life that everybody's unique, but I knew that about myself. Like I just knew like, I didn't think like everyone around me, you know. Um, I didn't act really like everyone else around me, and I knew there was some about me. But I didn't realize, and I, I realized much later in life, is that I just didn't really know me. Mm. So I uh I got into a lot of trouble, you know. I ended up actually in jail, believe it or not. Most people don't know that. And uh well thanks for that, sharing that. It's for how long? Yeah, <laughs> that was uh not too long, but long enough, I'll tell you that. I walked into uh I remember I, I, I got caught doing some, some dumbness and uh I remember I went into juvenile hall at the time and I looked up and there was a sign that says your freedom ends here. And I never forgot that sign because I never thought about that freedom. What wow. does that actually mean? You know? well, and how old are what. you at this point? Oh, I was probably young, like 14, 13, 14. Oh, okay, juvenile. Yeah. Maybe, maybe 15. Just, yeah, I was, I was young. And um, yeah, I, I, I just, I remember thinking that and it, it just, it just set me and I started thinking about that. And I think that's probably one of the first few times when I was young that I actually started thinking, you know, like, what does that mean, freedom? Well, obviously, I'm in a confined space, and I'm not free to do what I want. So maybe there's some my freedom is being stopped there. And I started thinking. And I won't say it was that event. But definitely in that time period, I started what I what I developed my thinking, or I started learning to think like, what does actually think? See, most people think that mental activity is thinking. That's not thinking. Thinking is when you take an idea and you start looking at it from different perspectives. Mm. You start reflecting on what that actually means. You, you you meditate, you sit within it. You sit within there and say, what does that actually entail? Like, what does that take? And then you start observing how it plays out in, in, in the reality that you're experiencing. And most of my life has come down to what of getting what I wanted came from starting just to really think about, well, what is it really that I want? You know, mm -hmm. I knew I didn't want to go the route that I was going. 
so I decided that wasn't the route I was going to go anymore. And people sometimes say, man, you make it sound so easy. Well, it really is that easy. You know, if you don't like, if you don't like, you know, when you're sitting there and you're in jail or, you know, you're, you're looking around the, the people you're in, you're going, God, you know, I, sh I really shouldn't be here. You know, it's that simple to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And see, most people, they keep doing the same things they've always done and they keep getting the same results they've always gotten. And then they wonder, well, why hasn't anything changed? Well, you can't, nothing can change until you decide that, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do something different. And I was bad in school. You know, I was always really smart. I just never applied myself. And uh, I was an athlete in high school. And even though I, you know, I had some run-ins with the law, I was still on track to, to go to college as an athlete. And then I got injured my senior year. I, saw, I got injured my junior year. And uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get to the next level. It wasn't a severe injury, but it was severe enough. And uh, I looked around. I said, God, if I stay here with all these dummies I hang around with, I'm, I'm screwed. There's, I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to do anything else in life except stay here. And if I got to get out of my environment. So I, for me, it was like, I just got to run somewhere else. I got to go to college somewhere else. And uh, I tell you, I went from being a C student my whole entire life to making the dean's list in one semester. Wow. One semester the next, and I never got off of it because someone said, listen, you just got to get the grades. It's the only way you're going to do it. I had blown the SAT. So I was like, man, I really got to make a difference here. And sure enough, that's what I did. And uh, is that because then you, first of all, what I'm really hearing is you made a decision. Like yeah. you stopped playing in the sabotage, the, the we'll say, self-sabotage realm that we sometimes reside <laughs> right. in yeah yeah exactly and then you were like well this isn't fucking working i gotta decide to do something different what yeah. do i want for myself and i could hear that you made that decision once you got clear about what you didn't want and did you do you feel like demo it's important to know what you want instead as you're making decisions no, or like you just have to know. No, this is not what I freaking want. No, no. And this is here's 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 a trick I've learned. And here's the other thing about decision before I forget is that when you make a decision, it's not so easy as like because everyone makes a decision. Most people, not everyone. Yeah. But most people make a decision every year at the new year. This is the year I'm going to get into the best shape of my life. Mm. Yeah, everyone does that. Gym memberships go through the right. roof <laughs> and everyone makes a decision. And then by February, March, that decision has faded away to a dream or a wish. And the thing is with the decision is I, I feel like for it to be effective, you got to have a carrot. You know, you got to have, there's a reason why I want to do it. I had developed a strategy um, most of my life that, that, that has wor worked well for me, which is when I'm going in one direction and I don't like where it's going and I make the decision that this is it and I, I get so enamored with the idea of god my results will be so much better if i just leave this path and i go on another that i just take the complete opposite direction of it i mean i take it to the extreme like if i'm wearing you know uh white shoes i start wearing black shoes if i start you know if i start doing my if i get out of bed on the left side i get off on the right side i mean i i take it to an extreme like i go the complete opposite direction and then when i get there i reevaluate Absolutely. I love that. Can I just highlight that? Because you're yeah, literally, yeah. what I'm hearing you do is you're literally, it's almost like you're playing a role opposite of the role you've been playing for a long time that has no longer been serving or supporting. And so what I'm hearing you do is literally changing things up on the opposite. And on a neuroscience level, on a psychological level, that does a lot of things. It's like you have new perspectives. You have a new way of forming those neural paths and really stepping into this. And I love to experience life as it's an experiment. That's my yeah. attitude is everything is an experiment. Let's see what happens. Right. And, and it's almost like, let's see what happens if I do something on the opposite. I love that. My, my mentor and a good friend, Jack Canfield had a saying that he taught us and he said, you know, he learned it from someone else, but he says, try everything do it in a 30-day experiment experiment mm -hmm. so if, if you if you've never been vegan you know go be 30 days be vegan try it as an experiment uh if you've never been to the gym for 30 days straight go for 30 days just show up for 30 days straight if you um 
you know, get up early, 30 days, 30 days, do your 30, try everything in a 30 day experiment. And after 30 days, if it's worked, commit to another 30 days. And uh, the gentleman who taught him that say, I live my life within 30 day experiments. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a 30, try it as a 30 day experiment. But what commitment. I found is commitment. Well, commitment's a big thing. Like mm -hmm. you got to commit in order to really, commitment is kind of the glue to the decision. Because, you know, I, I see it all the time. I, I saw this beautiful house here today and I said, oh, I'm going to buy that house. You know, that's technically a decision, but I'm not really going to buy that house because I don't want to spend the money to buy that house. It looks nice, but it, I'm cool with what I got. You know, I don't wanna, I'm not really committed to getting that Right, house. yes. Um, but a committed decision is an effective one. If it's committed and you say, this is it, you know, I want to change the results in my life. You know, I was 15 years old. I think we did the math, not the other, but 15 or 16 years old. When I was in a car and my friend, uh, Chris Hermio came in and he said, let's go. I want to, we, at the time, me and him were, just loved music. So he said, he took me to his car and he said, let's just listen to some music in the car. And we were listening in the car and then on came on Missy's Elliot, Missy Elliott's song, The Rain. And um, I remember listening to that song and I, I was a DJ but I wasn't really into music. I just was a DJ, I did parties and, and clubs like that. But I was listening to that song and I remember these words coming out of my mouth. I said, I want to work with them. And them, I didn't even know what that meant. And there it was, I just listening to the song. I said, God, I really want to work with these people. Missy and whoever else made this music and everyone involved. It just sounded so like nothing I had ever heard of in my life. And seven years later, I was in a room with her. Wow. Eight years wow. later, I had met Timbaland and I, I who had made that made the track. And we went on a two, you know, two decade worth of creating music together. That is manifesta but, manifestation at its finest. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I realized that when I said it, but then I, I realized something else. Um, and this I realized just recently, like really, really understood it, which is we got to be careful with what we say, mm -hmm. you know, because everything we say that comes out of our mouth yes. gets planted in this endless sea of abundance that there is. And we might not think it, but that seed is being nourished in probably the most fertile land there is in all of existence, which is our mind. And it grows. And um, Earl Nightingale in The Stranger Secrets said, you know, you, you, you got to be careful what you're, you're thinking because you can either plant nightshade, which is a poison, or you could plant corn in the seed of your mind, and both will grow in equal abundance. So I'm very careful about the things I say because I know, like, if I see something kind of slipping out my mouth, I grab it and pull it back in, like, <laughs> oh, I. God, I'm never gonna get whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't don't say that! Don't say that! You know, um, but yeah, there was a lot of cases like that where I where I just said something, and then I looked back and I said, "Wow, you know, this is actually right. happening. It happens. It happens." So, brother speaks uh, for me. I agree. Can yeah. we actually scale that back? And uh -huh. can you share from that moment where you got the download, you got the hit with "I Want to Work with." Missy Elliott and people like her, artists like her. What steps, what processes did you take to make it happen seven years later? Well, there was a lot, and I'll, I'll give you some, but I'll give you, if before I give you all of those, I'll give you the one that if you do, we'll get it to you no matter what happens. Okay. All the other ones are more of a process, but this is the one strategy in life that I figured out that you can get anything you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't quit. Mm. I'll say that one more time. You can't quit. If you want something bad enough, the simple trick is to keep doing it until you've accomplished it. So I says, God, that sounds so easy. And it is. And here's an example that I'd like you to think about. Um, let's say, um, some of you know in California, there's these giant, there's this beautiful national park, and they have these giant sequoia trees that are just magnificent 
And uh, we're just using this as a metaphor. I'm not, I'm not encouraging anyone to do what I'm about to say, but it's just to use it metaphorically. The cases comes with the warning. But, but, yeah, no, it's just because, just you know, when nobody get upset and be like, we got to cancel him for, for saying what he's about to say. But let's say you were going to go and you're, you're, that represents, that tree represents your goal, what you want to accomplish. And uh, every day, you were going to go and you were going to get an axe and you were going to sharpen the axe and, and sharpening the axe is a metaphor for doing something to improve your situation. Meaning if you want to be a great salesman, you learn about sales. If you want to be a better healthcare practitioner, you're going to spend some time studying healthcare practitioner. If you want to be a, a producer or a podcaster, you're going to spend time with producers and podcasters and pick their brains. So you're going to sharpen the axe. And then every day, you're going to go and you're just going to take five swings as hard as you can at that tree. Now, these trees are massive. After the first five swings, you're going, this is never going to come down because they're just massive. Some, some of those trees take hundreds of people holding hands to get around them. But that's how some of our goals are. They're so massive that when we look at them, we say, we're never going to get there. It's impossible. But if you did that every day, by the end of the month, you get a little piece of that tree out. And then by the end of the year, you got a good chunk of it. Now that might take you a whole lot of years to do. The bigger the goal, the more swings you got to take. But you and I both know, just like everybody listening, if you did that every day mm. and didn't quit, it was only a matter of time till the tree came down. It's only a matter of time. From South Florida to California, it's a very, very, very long walk. But if I walked every day and I just took five steps, sure, it might take me a century to get there, but I would get there. Yeah. You know? That's right. So, That's a beautiful and powerful analogy. Yeah. And what I hear from that is, yes, decide, commit, and focus. And one of the things that I um, love to do myself is I look at, I have goals. Uh, mm -hmm. I have monthly goals. I work, when I work with my clients, we have a manifesting um where the first day of the month we have the manifesting day and we love really that. track yeah. our dreams and and we track what our goals are in that month so it's bringing that feminine energy with a masculine energy but it's really also keeping focus like having it at the forefront right here nice. on the side of my wall i have my life wheel goals and i'm focusing on for nice. 2023 and i recognize when i don't revisit those goals if i don't look at it every day like I sort of forget about it, right? It's not that I yeah, forget yeah. about it. Oh, but yeah. It's important to be like, right, this is my these are my priorities. This is what I'm focusing on this month or this quarter, whatever it may be. Well, if you want it, if you really want it bad enough, that's what it's going to take mm -hmm. to get it. Like there's a lot of things, you know. I, I, people always ask me, you know, what are some of the traits? You've worked with always successful people, some rich with really rich people. Yes. Like, what are the things that's that make them happen? And um, it's all really the same. It's all really, really the same. Uh, Jack Canfield, to mention again, wrote a great book called The Success Principles. And, and it's one book that I tell everybody, if you want to, if you really want to fast track where you're going, uh, read that book, do a principle a week, just read the first chapter and then just in, incorporate that into your life for the week. And then read the second chapter, do that for the second week. And if you do it for the year, you'll go through 56 of them. There's 68, but you'll, you'll get to a, a block of them. And, um, persistence but i think persistence is not quitting so this is just All saying right. i'm gonna make this happen uh will of focus being able to just be able to focus and and not get distracted i was, I was a friend of mine one of my best childhood friends i i mean i i love the guy and we were watching the um we were at the world baseball classic yesterday was it yesterday or tuesday um one of the most incredible baseball games i've ever seen in my life mm -hmm. And uh, for some of you who've watched it, it was it's just un unbelievable. I was right there watching that game, and it was. And at, to me, I was. In, baseball can be a pretty boring sport for some people. Um, it was one of the first times. That, I mean, every pitch, every inning, it was just such an amazing game between the U.S. and Japan that I was just in, just couldn't I couldn't lose focus. I was, and every time you know, once in a while, I just stop and I look over him. He's on his phone. He's over here looking at this. He's going, yeah, but he's just. <laughs> It's distracted. And I'm going, God, this guy can't even focus at the one thing that he loves to do the most. Um, not to knock him. He had a lot of things on his mind. But that's mo most people. Like, they, life is that interesting all the time. And most people are just, you know, they're just looking everywhere else except 
focusing on what's at hand. Mm -hmm. It's even more important when it's something you want. Mm -hmm. um, that and then having having good habits, like most of the habits, even I have to sometimes take inventory of my habits because they work for some time, but then all of a sudden I'll change direction and something I want to do and realize this habit isn't really working for me. Mm. Um, I think that's really important, Demo. Just yeah. I think that self-reflection, self-evaluation is really important. It's like, yeah, it, so I'm going to review, you know, make a decision, be committed yeah. to it, be persistent, don't give up and, give up. and reevaluate what is working, what continues to, you know, bring, bring it into the uh, continue on our path and what isn't really working and what do we yeah. need to pivot, right? So yes, I love that you, you are sharing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the more you reevaluate, the, mm -hmm. the, the better things stay in picture. Because honestly, sometimes things change daily. You know, you, you might be doing something that works for a couple of days and then you realize, you know what, this isn't working. Why? Well, I'm doing this habit and I'm waking up at 5 a.m., but I'm staying up till 1 a.m. because I have all these other habits that are not working. So I'm only getting four hours of sleep or five hours of sleep, per se. And, uh, that's not working with my bigger goal, which is to be healthy. And I know I need more sleep. See, that's, that's an example. Sometimes just by reevaluating. Yeah, if, yeah that, that, that's pretty common. I mean, it is for me, for sure. I, I catch myself sometimes at two, three in the morning doing things that are really not that important that could wait. But it's like, oh, I just got to get them done because <laughs> activity, I, I, I got to get, I got to get all these things taken care of. And yeah. uh, it's like, that wasn't that, that wasn't that dire, you know, like, health is more important for me absolutely i should be i should be asleep so mm -hmm. yeah mm. yeah Thank but you. you know yeah can we go back more specific this is my curious brain so these this is the mindset these are the beliefs these are the actions you take and now actually i want to get more specific with the actions from again mm. the moment you're like oh, i'm going to be working with missy elliott to yeah. what actions did you take did you get more education because you said you were your musical ready like it's a, a natural yeah. talent you have but what sort of things did you do and then um i'm curious how because that's a really big jump from where you were to moving into this whole um industry at this level and i know that there are millions of people who try to tap into this industry and what were the, some of the actions that you took that and i it was i was listening to your talk on your website um mm. at the university you were speaking at and one of the things you had mentioned so i'm assuming this is one of the actions you took was you made yourself stand out mm -hmm. and so i'd love to hear a little bit more in detail um about some of the actions that you took to get you well, to but be before then, like the first couple of years, really, um, after I had decided, well, I, I had said that I don't even want to even say it was a decision. It was more of a, a thought terrible. that yeah. kind of came out of my mouth, you know, <laughs> um, the, it was, I never forgot it. Mm. You know, I kept it at, at my forefront and it took a lot of years until mm things started shaping because the curse that we have as human beings is, well, the gift that we have is that we could think of anything, any possibility using our imagination. The curse is that we got to wait till that reality comes into fold. And um, it was just something that I, I, I just always had an affinity for. And then that day listening to Missy, music have i had an affinity for music but that day listening to that song kind of took it to a whole other level mm -hmm. and uh for years i i just kept doing what i knew which was just like i kept djing and I, I didn't really get to a very high level at that i did it and i did parties here and there like i mean i was like a neighborhood legend you know like oh yeah, this guy's amazing it's great but i, was, I wasn't really skill wise i wasn't even really that good but i i kept at it and yeah. I kept experimenting, but I never forgot it. And then let's maybe five years later, I was in college and I had 
every semester I kept changing the things that I wanted. And uh, I had a dream one evening where I was DJing again. And at this point, I, I hadn't really DJed that long. You know, I, at that point, I had been I had been on a break because I went to college. I started, like, you know, becoming an adult, you know, and adults don't DJ, you know. Um, but I had a dream that I was DJing. So I woke up that day and I said, God, you know, this college thing is just really not working out for me. So I went to see the the counselor at the school. And I told him, listen, I want to do something in music. And he says, well, there's a great orchestrational school here at the university. No, 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 I, I want to do like make beats. I want to do stuff that's on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know where that came from. I never had said to myself, I want to do that. So afterwards, because I was thinking, I was like, that's such a weird thing to come out of my mouth. Like, I, I don't even know what does that mean? I want to make beats. You know, like I didn't, I didn't understand that. I didn't, but it came out of my mouth. And uh, I directly correlated it to that day afterwards where I was just like, God, I said I wanted to work with them. I guess that's how I would work with them. She raps, I would make the beat. You know, like that's that's where, I, that's where my mind was. I and just, uh, I yeah, always think the dream is in you, it's for you. And it's these, we'll uh, say clues that just sort of come out. It's like, what the heck, why did I say that? Or, or why yeah, what, what, did that, <laughs> yeah, what is that? What does that mean, you know? Um, but he went, he looked, and sure enough, he found Full Sail University, which is the university I went to in, in Winter Park in Florida. And uh, he said, there's an open house two weeks from now. I said, sign me up. Mm. I went down there. I drove down there, and I never went back to college. Everyone Now, everyone thought I was crazy. Now, I'm going to tell the story, and then we'll go down and break the parts to it. Never, Amazing. It, everyone thought I was crazy. I went, I went there, did the tour, and then I drove straight back to Miami. And... Um, I told my parents when I came in, I'm dropping out of college and I'm going to music. And they thought I was crazy. And in my mind, they weren't very happy about the decision. They said, well, we're not giving you any money for it. You're going to have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I didn't care. I knew I walked into the studio that they had there at Full Sail. And I looked around. And I said, "This they definitely make beats here. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to go. You know, i never been yeah. into a recording studio. I didn't even only seen them in the movies. Yes. And uh, I went there and I wasn't going to be denied. And sure enough, I ended up Another story, but they're finding the money to be able to go to school there, and uh, I was top of my class all the way through. Wow! I just said, "This is this is it," and uh, I did everything I could and took in. I never left campus for those thirteen months. I was there getting my associate of science. I never left campus, and I was doing research on what I was going to do when I left there. So I was constantly trying to find what was my thing, keep getting better, keep getting better, keep getting better, keep getting better, and then I found out where all the top people were at. They were studio called the hip factory there was one in new york and there was one in miami so i wanted to go to the one in new york but i said okay well my plan b would be to go to the one in miami sure enough got out of school went to the one in miami and then it was just stayed working there. i never left i never left the place wow. until uh i got my opportunity and then when i got my opportunity i didn't take the, i didn't take my foot off the gas i just mm -hmm. i kept at it so to break some of that down like sometimes you don't know you know, you don't know what to do from, from where you are. I didn't. So you wait. Yeah. You know, the luxury that we have now that I didn't have back then, and now you just look anything up. Back then, it was a little more challenging because there was the internet wasn't really, wasn't really, nope. wasn't, wasn't really <laughs> as accessible and easier to maneuver than as yeah. it is now. Still dial so, up back then. <laughs> yeah, I was still dial up. We were on AOL. Shit, it was, it was, it was <laughs> Not fine, you know. I know. <laughs> but but um, sometimes you just wait. You just wait. You just gotta sit there and sit with it, and just say, okay, this is what this is what it is. And what I would do now, if I knew better back then, is um, I wouldn't change anything. But I'm some people ask me, well, if you can go back, and give yourself an advice, yeah. be, is I would act as if, like, okay, what would I, what would that? Well, I would be better at music, so I would be. I would have kept DJing longer. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I stopped pretty much when I went to college. I would have kept getting better at that. I would have kept developing my skills. Um, I hate the term "fake it till you make it." Because I hate it too, Demo. I, I, I never, so much. I never, I never liked that. So I wouldn't have faked it like I made it. Even though there was a time in my life when I did do that, you know, yeah. I, I acted like I was a star. But I look now and I just say, "You yeah, act as if." So I would have yeah. acted as mm -hmm. if I was this producer, and then I would have done things in accordance with that. I love it. I say be it until you become and embody it. That's a great, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's that's um but then 
you know, I got, I went to a place where I knew they did that. You know, I went to school, got educated. And you, you, if you don't know something, you got to get educated in it. The trick to what I do now that's different than then is that now I just find somebody that's doing what I want to do. And then I ask them to teach me. And then I do exactly as they say until I find out they're lying or they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. And that's how I became a speaker. That's how I became a trainer. That's how I became a consultant. Because after, um, after, after a while in music, I wanted some, I wanted a new challenge. I said, okay, now I want to move into something different. But I didn't, I wasn't about to go to school and, and go through all that process again. Cause I was like, that's just going to take too long. Um, so I found people that, that were doing exactly what I wanted to do. And so they teach me that. Right. And I, and I remember at Blue Talks, Miami, yeah. you had shared, I think you were like hunting down and you were, this demonstrates your persistence with, was it Les Brown? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you share oh, yeah. that story? It was yeah, so yeah. I, I, I got into about 2016. I, um, I'm sorry, I'm 2019. Was it 2018, 2019? 2016 was when I met Les. Um, but I have been studying personal development since pretty much 2008, about the time The Secret came out. Me so too. That? That's, me that's, too. Really what, that's really what yes. got me. Mm. Got me into really understanding the, the whole personal development uh, industry. And um, of course, it's, if you get into personal development and you're into the art of training, of speaking and keynote yeah. speakers, it's only a matter of time to learn about Les Brown. Uh, it's kind of like if you're into basketball, it's only a matter of time to learn about Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. Right. That's how I feel about Les Brown. So mm -hmm. I had been listening to him for years and I was like, God, this guy is unbelievable. And he's from Miami. So I was like, there's this, this thing we got here. In 2016, I finally had the chance to see him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I signed up for a, a weekend workshop he was doing in Orlando. And there was supposed to be over 200 some people there. But twist of fate have it, there was a massive blackout in the Northeast, which most of these people were coming from, and only like 40 were there. <laughs> and when I got there, oh. yeah, we found out when we got there that mo they were considering it at one point canceling, but he said he wanted to do it. And uh, I I went in there, and here's a small conference room. I mean, it's, it's a small, they looked like they would have lunch in there. It's a very small room, and there's 40 people in there. Mm -hmm. And in walks Les Brown. And I, the moment he walked in, I said, oh God, here's my opportunity. There's only 40 mm -hmm. people here. Like there's no, there's not, there's no security. There's no, it's just <laughs> him. You know? It's just him. He's mine, you know? Yeah. And uh, at the first break, from the first break, I started out and I said, Let, you know, I walked up and said, Les, you're amazing. You're so wonderful. It's great. I mean, God, you're so good. I, I want to learn how to do that. Please, I, please teach me how to do that. I mean, I'll do whatever it takes. Just show me what I'm saying. All the right words are coming out of my mouth. And he was looking at me like, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, you want to be like me? Yeah, like, and in my head, I'm going like, God, I'm really not connecting with him. And, I, and of course not. This guy hears this everywhere he goes. You know, Everybody says the same thing. Everybody says yeah. the same thing. To him. And uh, he's like, oh, you know, just here, buy, he's buy some CDs. I've listened to all your CDs. I know I'm all, yeah, you know all my CDs. Well, buy these others. Oh, buy this bundle. Yeah, no, no, no. Less. I don't want to buy the damn bundle. I want you to teach me how to do that. And I mean, the guy's going to the bathroom and I'm following him in the bathroom. <laughs> He's in the, in the stall. I mean, wash my hands. You know, Les, I'll tell you, it'd be worth your time. I'd be so good. I'd, I'd do everything you need. You know, just, let, just help me out. I promise you. I'll do. And uh, went back in, sat in, listening to just in thought with this guy. Lunchtime, I'd sit with him at lunch. Be like, oh, God, this guy's just going to follow me around. <laughs> and um, by the end of the first day, you could tell he's just like, oh, God, there's still two more days of this guy, you know? <laughs> And uh, what are you I, thinking at this point? Because like you, I wasn't, I wasn't, people. I wasn't, I wasn't. See, that's the thing. <laughs> you were I being wasn't. guided. No, no. I, I, yeah, you'd say that, or I just, just did, I just didn't know what else to do. So I just did something, you know? I'm the type of person that I rather, I rather beg for forgiveness and ask for permission. So right. I don't know. You know, I have no problems making a fool out of myself. Fool, right? I mean, that's what came I don't, I don't, I really don't just, care. Yeah. Whatever, right? Make a fool of yourself, but you're going for what you want. You're yeah, I mean, at that point, I knew he was going to be there for three days. So I had yeah. three days to kind of figure out how to at least convince him <laughs> to help me outside of the three days, you know? <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, it got funny because at the end of the first day, like the other participants are laughing. This guy's crazy. The guy just doesn't. He's relentless. I'm like, I'm a, this guy's gonna teach me. I'm relentless you, is a good word. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I yeah. was relentless, and uh, you know, I walked. I walked him all the way up to the elevator. I to get in the elevator with him. He's like, stop. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. They stop. You just yeah. don't even think about getting in the elevator with me. Um, and the next day, sure enough, I mean, the seminar started at eight o'clock. I was down there at six fifty. I said, I'm going to catch him before he goes. So he has to set up. And he turned around that corner at seven fifteen, and his eyes, he was just like, oh shit, this guy. Man. And I was like, Mr. Brown, can I help you with your bag? <laughs> so he gave me his bag. He walked in, and then you know, I. I it was easier. That wasn't as aggressive on the second day. And um, he heard me on. I said, this is this is the deal. And I kind of gave him a little bit more background on myself and, and then, uh, you know, where I was now, at, at in life. At this point, Devil, let me just check in. Had you already been working with Madonna and the other artists yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is so 20, already, okay. Yeah, I was already, already way established. Way established. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And now yeah, you're, yeah. you're moving in, into a new, expanding yeah. your business into speaking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There. I had been coaching um, certain people for a while. I was, that's where I started. I was coaching certain folks in certain aspects of their life. And then uh, I wanted to move to stages. That's mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. I wanted to get away from one on one and do, do stages. And uh, he was, he was the guy to me. He was, that was mm -hmm. it. You know? mm -hmm. It's uh, I, I went and knew we, we had a conversation and then by, you know, seminar started, we went in the first break. Sure enough, like I was doing the day before I came up to him and he looks at me, he says 35,000. Yes. And I said, 35, what? <laughs> he says, you give me 35,000 and uh, I'll, uh, 35 30 so i can't remember but it was like thirty-five thousand. and he says and i want it all right now and i'll um i don't know you're serious and i, I, I okay yeah and and i sat back down because <laughs> at that point i mean i had a, i had made i had done well for myself yeah uh, but i had never given anybody thirty-five thousand. i mean i had paid people but never that much money especially some guy i just met yeah. so this is what it, and at the moment now this is the thing this is the this so is it, the it critical was, moment to say it, how it, serious it, are you exactly because anytime you really want something the universe is always going to give you something to counter it and sure enough the moment that happened like my, you know part of me came out of me and said well my thirty-five thousand. ego came out that <laughs> What what is he going to give us? We want to know the services. We want to know this. In other words, I want to hear all the excuses that I'm going to come up with. That if he doesn't nail it, I'm not going to give him the thirty five thousand. And uh, I uh, I thought about it. And then at lunch, I didn't follow him. I went right to my room and so because he said he said it needs to be by today. If you want, if I if you want me to do it. And I went back to the room and I was like, oh man, that's just, I was just, all these things came out and it was 35,000 is a lot of money. You know, even when you got a lot of money, it's still a lot of money. Cause it's like, well, what am I, you know, I could buy a car for, for that. Yeah. You know, I, could, I could build two <laughs> schools in Africa, of this? Yeah. For two schools in Africa for $35,000. Like this is a lot of money. And, um, but I went and I, I, sure enough, I called a friend of mine and, and uh, they sent me, they said, you know, you have, I told them the situation. They said they were just quiet on the phone, which was very uncharacteristic of them at the time because they were always very chatty. And uh, he said, and he said, listen to me. And it was quiet on the phone. Okay. I said, hello? You still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. You're not saying nothing. And then they let me have it. They said, you know, you've been talking about this for four or five years. You haven't stopped talking about the guy. You, for the last two weeks, all I heard about this seminar, and all I heard about, oh, I'm going to get this guy to teach me how to talk. <laughs> imitating my voice. <laughs> you know, get Les Brown to be my trainer. <laughs> and uh, the guy gives you the opportunity to do it. And and you're complaining about what? I, he goes, did you not believe you're ever going to make $35,000 again in your life? Well, no, of course not. I think I could definitely make $35,000. And then... Uh, he said, well, just jump. You develop wings on the fall. Boom. And hung up, hung up, on, hung up on me. And uh, I, wanna, I went in. If I may, I want to say, wow, what an incredible friend. You use the yeah. resource of 
of checking in with someone you trust, someone who knows you deeply, someone who likely is in a similar mindset. Um, and I feel like that's also a strategy, we'll say. But also what I'm really also hearing is make decisions not from where you are, but from where you want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. If I would have made it where I was, I would have left the seminar and not come back. Right. <laughs> I would have left. I would have taken my 35000 It was in Disney World. I went to Orlando. I would have went to Disney World. Um, but no, I went. I tell you, I got, I got the card, um, brand new Amex that I just got. And I gave it. And I was like, oh, my God. I was nervous. I was sick. And I gave him the card. He, he swiped that thing without even blinking an eye. He just gave me the card back. And I got to tell you, it didn't sting as bad after it swiped. And I saw that it cleared. I said, oh, OK. OK. Um, but I got to tell you, he mentored me for two years. He gave me his number. Wow. He said, anytime you have a keynote, you're going to call me. And this is what we're going to do. Anywhere that I am, I'm not going to track you down. You're going to have to track me down. But wherever I am, you just show up and you just say, I'm here for Les Brown. And you let me and you follow me around. And uh, I went to tons of his keynotes he did over those two years. And I just did that. I didn't even call him. I would show up and be like, I'm here, I'm here for Les Brown. Well, you know, I'm dumb. I'm, I'm dumb. He's expecting me. And I would just follow him around and I would just watch him. I watched how he conducted himself as a speaker. I saw how he prepared. He let me be in the room while he was doing things. He, most of the time that we, we wouldn't even say much. He wouldn't say much. He, he got to the point where he would see me and just nod and that's it. He just well, I expected you to be here, you know? And I just watched him. I watched him. Once in a while, he'd give me some tidbits and say, did you see how I did this and this and this? Yeah, no, I did. Did you see this? Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I did this and got this. But most of the time, I just watched them. And then once in a while, he'd have private mastermind groups. He'd have me sit in on. Maybe just five people in him, and he would do his thing. And I, I, got, I got to have an education that would have I would have paid five times as much for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made my money back, I believe, in the first keynote after that seminar because – he redefined that real talk series came from that style i developed from les brown he said don't do that do this uh, no no don't do that don't do don't even do a keynote don't do a powerpoint don't do none of that just go up there and do this and follow this format and he gave me the whole format which yeah. was uh it changed my life I, I, it was an easy trick but he would say i said well how am i going to memorize all the points he says you don't have to memorize all the points he said come up with an acronym that will be what you want the audience to you want these are the things you want the audience to leave with and uh the ask to the let's say the acronym just do it on the fly is mastery right so each of the letters symbolize a part of the lesson so m is the importance of mentorship a is having a good attitude s is surround yourself with amazing people t is you know um Use your time effectively. Yeah, yeah, use your time effectively. Yeah, exactly. You know, E, be excellent. Or, you know, be responsive to what's hey, happening. That's how I do. Yeah, that's, a, that's the kind of stuff I learned. I had learned from, from Les. And, uh, and, and yeah, by the way, cool. just to our audience, Real Talks, if you go to democasanova.com, you will see um, he has videos of him speaking there. And I was actually watching one of his talks. Um, and I was asking him about it. I said, what is real talks? Yeah. Is it kind of like a TEDx? Like, what is this? And if you um, can share demo what that is. Yeah, that will every year, uh, actually going now in a couple of weeks at my university, uh, they, they bring back, it's called Hall of Fame Week, where they bring back all the Hall of Fame uh, inductees from my, my university is like the Harvard of entertainment schools. Some of the people that work in, Marvel and some of the biggest facets of entertainment come out of come out of the school that I went to, the university I went to, and uh, every year they bring back they do a Hall of Fame week, and uh, I was inducted into the fifth class of Hall of Fame members. Mm -hmm. So every year a bunch of us go back there, and it's just a week of lectures and talks and all. So the Real Talk series is happening during that week, and I called it Real Talk because it was very unfiltered. Now, I don't tend to curse and stuff, but I, there's there's all sorts of stuff that came out during. But it was just peeling back on these young students who are looking to get into the uh, entertainment industry. Some of the real things that need to occur in order to happen. So uh, it's a it's a favorite. They, they're old, they're they're older talks now, but uh, people have enjoyed them, so I've kept them up there for a while. And, Has any uh, of the students 
approach you like you approach Les Brown in the beginning? <laughs> yeah, 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 tons of them. Yeah, some of you, some Following of them, some you around, of them I used, love it. Yeah, some of them have used my own strategy against me. So I teach them some. They'll be like, so this is what I'm thinking that I need from XYZ. And I say, oh, wow, okay. Um, sure. Yeah, I guess I will, I will do that. Um, <laughs> There's actually four in the series, but they were recently there were some updates to uh, some of the plugins on the website, so I think they're down right now. But I, they, they'll be up again. The one is up, yes. Yeah, yeah I, know there, I know there's one up. The, the other ones will be up uh, again shortly. I know there are two instant revamps to my website, so I think some of the videos and stuff are down. But that oh. one is up, which is probably the first one. It's a good so one. it's a yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good mm -hmm. one. Well, and I love that. Thank you for sharing that really hot tip about having the acronym and then you just go through it. I think that's so brilliant. And that almost yeah. takes a, away any sort of like, shit, what I was, I what was I supposed to say? And it was like, what letter am I on? What letter am I on? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. I had this like tedious line by line. And he looked at, he looked at the paper and it, it, it <laughs> honestly, I spent a long time putting that thing together. And uh, he just looked at it and ripped it up right in front of me. And it was like my heart just stopped. I'm like, oh my God, you know? And he's like, you're not doing that. This is what it's you're that, doing. It's that next level of self-trust. And just yeah. like you already have everything you need to know inside of yourself. You just organize it in your mind with acronyms. I yeah. love that. But I will say, I will say this, and here's another thing with the, with the, with the money. Well, before that, most of the time we tend to ask for advice from someone that are not necessarily the best person to ask for. Like for instance, right. we we talk about, oh, we want to invest in retirement. We have an investment opportunity, but then we go talk to Tim or or yes. Sandy, the neighbor, who's a teacher who who that's a lot of money to them. And we're asking them, should we invest? Are they gonna be like, no, no, of course not. Don't do that. That's what if you lose it, you know? Instead of asking an a, a specialist, a financial specialist. Mm -hmm. And the thing is I called somebody who not only because they're a dear friend, but I called that specific person because I knew that the money wasn't an issue for them. Yeah. You know, like they, they, they have their own they, boss. Yeah. They, they're not, they're their own boss. They didn't, the money wasn't a big thing. They weren't going to think about the money. They were going to look at the opportunity because if I would have called somebody because I didn't want the money because of the money, I could have found somebody that said, don't do that. That's a lot of money to give somebody you don't even know. Mm -hmm. And that would have been the end of it. So like when you call somebody, before you call them, ask yourself, well, what is the real reason? What is it I want to get out of this call? Because if I would have called them, like, I need somebody to talk me out of this. Yeah. There's an endless amount of people I could have called. But I need somebody to give me a perspective because I don't want to do this. Yes. So find the opposite perspective. Like, I don't want to do this. I need somebody to tell me why I should do this. So I have some perspective. And they did. And I, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that they did because... Um, it's paid his way to gold. What I make now in a keynote, I've made my money 15, 20, 30 times over from mm -hmm. back from less mm -hmm. for what I get from he took my rate from making fifteen hundred to fifteen thousand in a matter of weeks. Um wow. and and even more now, but he it's when you find a master that's doing what you want to do, you don't, you, they, you skip all that massive learning curve. You still got a learning curve, but it's a lot, lot faster yeah. of getting to where you want. So that's probably my biggest trick to success is that, is that whenever I think of anything, I just go find somebody that's doing exactly what I want. And then I say, listen, what's it going to take for you to teach me? And then I convince them and do exactly as they say until I find out they're lying or they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that is powerful. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I also agree. You know, when it comes to making aligned decisions, really checking in with the people, whether it's my own coach, um, the or like perhaps peers who are in a same coaching container um, or somebody who's working with a coach I'm thinking about hiring and asking right what's your what what has been your experience like you have created the success that i am looking for um and i'm curious what 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 was it like to work with them or you know i what were some of your specific results so it's always helpful to have that perspective so that you can hear uh the maybe pros and cons and then make a yeah. decision still from our hearts and really make sure we're taking that aligned action yeah
Yeah. I could I concur. <laughs> Beautiful. So we are going to um start to close this. Uh -huh. uh, beautiful episode and what we're going to do is we're going to drop another episode particularly with we'll have a different vibe with um the power of plant medicine in that journey in terms of helping us really align more with the life that we truly want to create for ourselves and i'm not saying that you must use plant medicine to do that but because yeah. i'm personally interested in it as a shamanic practitioner like i said i'm a newbie to it um if those of you who are interested or already do plant medicines and you want to hear a little bit more about demos and mind um perspectives and experiences of plant medicine and what it's done for us uh mind body spirit and really creating more hmm i've I'm feeling like the word that comes in is fulfillment, um, mm. more expansiveness, more magnetism, more miracles. Um, come and join us on that one. And I will let you know when that one drops in. So thank you so much, oh. Demo, for your wisdom. I oh, really, you, really love your shares with your story and just you being true to who you are and breaking it down for us. I know that there's going to be so many people receiving so much medicine from this episode and from your stories and just, um, ah, just that, that like inspiration. And I really want to say to you, well, like if the dream is in you, even if it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense, listen to that full body. Yes. That is so important. Just keep, moving in and searching for what are the things that are aligning with what you just, what just came out of your mouth or what you feel it. Mm. And I love what you said, Demo. Also, you know, in some ways it's like, wait, in, like wait for more information, but at the same time, be open to, to letting that information come into your field and, oh, yeah. and start to take action aligned with that and research. So thank you so much. And my loves, I would love to hear what your takeaways are from this episode. What action are you going to take because you dived in here today? And uh, I'd love to love to uh, hear from you. So thank you so much, Demo. I so appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing some of your stories somewhere down the road. Remember, thank don't you. quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> thank you.